Good afternoon. It has come to my attention that YouTube does not approve of swearing within the first 30 seconds of a video. Therefore, you will see a timer at the bottom until I'm allowed to swear. Today we're going to be talking about advertising and uh, contemporary advertising in particular. Advertising is constantly adapting to try and warp the minds of its consumers. Since the invention of the internet by Mr. Gerald H. Internet, in 1984, it's become more and more difficult to differentiate between a piece of content and an advertisement. Creators who are meant to be making content are making ads like that cunt, Jake Paul. Buy that merch, buy that merch, buy that merch. I think you have to market to them a ton of times to like make sure that they're like reminded of what message you want to push to them. Buy that merch, buy that merch, buy that merch, buy that merch. Cunt! ads that are meant to be making ads are making content and there's just a whole bunch of people stuck in the middle having their wallets yanked in all directions. Today I want to turn the spotlight on a few more recent evolutions of contemporary advertising and see how they're trying to make you, the consumer, spend your parents hard earned cash. Brands have always been present on social media, but for the longest time they really just said the same thing that their TV and print ads said, but condensed into a smaller, more digestible form for the platforms. At some point, some brands decided that they wanted their brand to be personified, and that their Twitter should come from the perspective of this uh, fake person. They saw Twitter am our full of people, so we am are to be people as also. Now, let's just say you've been hired to act as the voice of Steakums, a brand of thinly sliced beef. Which personality do you think best represents your company? Do you take the tone of A. Steaky Steve, the partially digested cow B. Your slightly racist uncle who keeps bringing up politics at the dinner table Or C. A nihilistic millennial who's worried about their job prospects If you voted C, congratulations, you're hired and now also fired Ironically enough, Subway decided that their Twitter would best be personified as a child sex offender now, some brand Twitter accounts like the Wendy's one aren't that bad, with some pretty sharp-witted people flinging a few inoffensive roasts that one shareholder called epic, and another was quoted saying, it's on fleck. But while the Wendy's Twitter account is out smoking grass, eating ass, and doing all the other things that their focus groups told them kids are into, other brands are trying to capture that lightning in a bottle, but to much less success. While Wendy's has decided to personify themselves as a smug anime girl, Burger King, voted stickiest flaws of 2018, decided that their brand would best be personified as the ulti girl who has the tiny little glasses in her DP, and listens to Billie Eilish and types exclusively in lower case and also doesn't reply to my fucking DMs, Jessica says shit like this why I have no respect for big brands on Twitter they ask a question like weirdest breakfast cravings then skip over all the answers like coochie, ass, and meth all which had thousands of likes and go to someone who says cereal but I put the milk in before the cereal <laughs> Have some fucking balls, Burger King. Go to the guy who said coochie and reply with, you'll love our new fish taco then. Or go to that guy who said ass and say, well, you must eat a lot of McDonald's then, huh? It's not hard. I'd have so much more respect for them if they actually did that. Like, who are you going to be offending? It's pretty much just young people on Twitter anyway. Although I guess if you're following Burger King on Twitter, maybe you are a bit older. And if you're young and following Burger King on Twitter, stop. Don't do that. Don't follow brands on Twitter. You're just letting them advertise to you for free. Follow me instead. I won't advertise to you. I'll just say shit like this. Amazon isn't nearly as wacky. Possibly because having a fun, relatable face while also treating your employees like shit is a little too dystopian, even for them. Watch Mark Wahlberg surprise two Vietnamese men with an unprovoked hate crime back in 1988. It's, that's, not, that's not a joke. That really happened. Oh, good to see Chuck E. Cheese has uh, worked on their character design since the 80s. Who's this Twitter for though? Like, kids who go to Chuck E. Cheese are probably too young to have Twitter. So is it aimed at the parents? Is Chuck E. Cheese the sort of place you go as an adult? Back in New Zealand there's a place called Chipmunks which is like the go-to party destination and I'm assuming the closest thing we've got to Chuck E. Cheese is. But you would never go there as an adult. It's full of screaming kids. Oh, is that what that fucking guy's meant to look like? I think Five Nights at Freddy's was good for Chuck E. Cheese's. They really had to look long and hard at their mascots and say, yeah, this is fucking weird. Chuck E. Cheese, let's get the summer started. Reward your child for a great school year by bringing in their report card for 10 free play points this summer. So I guess it is aimed at the parents, but 
<laughs> I love this promotion. You don't even have to have good grades like, hey mama, let's fuck up Chuck E. Cheese's. I know I got all lefts, but the cheese has my back. Sitting here at Chuck E. Cheese with my family. The kids are having a blast. Meanwhile, myself and all the other dads in the building have beers in our hands. Hashtag, this is living. Ah, this is the life. Here's a question for all my fellow gamers out there. Where do you get your gaming info from? GameStop? GameSpot? Cheap? Planet? Game? Spy? Pfft. Everyone knows real gamers get all that information from the KFC Gaming Twitter. I'm gonna have a bit of a hot take here, which is that uh, KFC is possibly the worst food to eat while gaming. I understand why Red Bull might sponsor video game related things, because people drink Red Bull while they play video games. No one eats KFC while they're playing video games. I'd much rather have the janky off-brand Player 2 controller than an official controller that's got KFC grease all over it. While a brand's Twitter account will slowly kind of ease its way into the back of your mind, every ad company dreams of having that one big explosive promotion that gets everyone talking. Whether that's a woke ad, a gimmicky promotion, or the absolute cream of the crop, ascension into memehood. First up, there's KFC's music set at the Ultra Music Festival. If you don't know what happened, Ultra Music Festival is an electronic music festival. KFC, or rather, DJ Colonel Sanders, got on stage for about a five minute set where he played chicken themed songs. To an audience that was entirely unimpressed, but more realistically was too cooked to realise what was going on. Bro, I was so fucking gacked at Ultra last week, when Diplo came on stage, I thought it was the chicken man. Even if their plan was to record it and then upload it for sober people, they've been aggressively deleting every video of it off YouTube, culminating in a bit of controversy when they took down an entire hour and a half H3H3 podcast for a two minute clip that they played in the middle. Yesterday we were doing our podcast and we talked about the Colonel doing his DJ set at Ultra and the minute that we put it up after the live stream ended, they blocked it worldwide. What is the point of viral marketing if the minute somebody talks about it, you freaking block it? How embarrassed would you have to be? KFC needs to fucking cool their jets. Their viral marketing campaigns are too frequent and too desperate. This next ad follows a child from birth to adulthood and with all the ups and downs that come with adolescence. Anytime you see one of these heartfelt ads, it's always going to be disappointing. You often see these at the pre-roll before movies. They're usually about two to three minutes long and they deal with topics such as loss or aging or parenthood. Except unlike a short film that might kind of leave you with a nice message or a nice final shot that leaves you thinking, uh, you're slapped with a bank logo or an insurance company logo and a second short story in the form of terms and conditions. These logos are the metaphorical towel thrown into your sobbing face as though the director is saying, clean yourself up. Let's see what this is an ad for. Maybe it's like a bank, you know, and the slogan will be something like, Through it all, we've been there for you. Every day, life asks you the same question. What are you going to try today? Oh to God, please, no! 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 Oh, it's Subway. It's, it's, it's Subway, like the, like the sandwiches. So, uh, maybe you should just not deal with ads and children for a wee while. I think you kind of you burnt that sort of entire sphere. Well, you can sort of see the connection between a life insurance company and say a short story about loss. Having Subway as the payoff for this ad immediately catapults it out of thought-provoking film into fucking Comedy Central skit in like two seconds. Not everybody wakes up happy. Sometimes you feel sad, scared, crappy. Yellow and blue. Kinda down. Can't wait to leave this closed-minded town. Okay, interesting. I wonder what this is an ad for. Mental health issues are super important and so often just get swept under the rug. So I'm glad that someone's talking about it. And I'm certain that it's a brand that's in a position to tastefully discuss such a topic. Oh, it's, uh, it's, it's Burger King, of course. Remember Burger King? They did the, they got the gray meat. Make sure you support mental health by, uh, by eating a burger at Burger King. If they're donating money to mental health causes, ooh, 
If they're donating money to mental health causes from these, then I guess that should be respected. Even if you're doing it for a shitty reason, like to sell more burgers, you are still doing a good thing. I think that should be recognised. But did you really have to call it a yas meal? Where's the uh, I'm too hungover to walk the extra five minutes to McDonald's meal? Next up is Pepsi and their woke ad. If you even just kind of walked past a computer back when this came out, you would have probably heard about it. It was really the talk of the town, which may have worked in their favor. No publicity is bad publicity, but in this case, maybe it is bad publicity. <laughs> Pepsi, popularized by the phrase, is Pepsi okay, decided that nothing symbolized wokeness, like 41 grams of sugar and an extremely affluent detached superstar. Unlike that controversial Gillette ad which had people arguing for and against it, pretty much everyone decided that this Pepsi ad sucks ass. Or sucks Pepsi. I think it's important to note as well that uh, that's not what happens when Kendall Jenner walks into a crowd. This is. <laughs> It's such an inoffensive rally, like a peace rally. Wow, really sticking it to the man there, Pepsi. No one's thought of that one before. How about you protest something that actually matters? Like Tumblr banning porn content. All right, I've had enough of this. As you can see, viral marketing campaigns are, are a fickle mistress. When they work, they can work great and everyone can be talking about them. But when they don't work, they fall so hard. And I think it's our duty as consumers to stand around and point and laugh when something like this goes horribly wrong. All right, let's move on to the most subtle of all three. So subtle, in fact, that you might not even know it's happening. Wow. I am, of course, talking about guerrilla marketing, also known as astroturfing. This one's a tricky one because it can be almost impossible to distinguish from genuine organic content. So it's time to don your tinfoil hats and put your child at risk of easily preventable diseases because we're entering conspiracy territory. Guerrilla marketing is most prevalent on websites like Reddit where there's no real rules regarding whether or not your post is a paid advertisement or not. Now you can actually pay for ads on Reddit, but these are segregated from the rest of the content and put on the side, or more recently they are actually included with the actual posts but with a large sticker that says ad on it. These ads often don't really get a lot of traction. People will see them and they probably click on them, but they don't really get a lot of interaction in terms of comments or upvotes or anything. Now, just because you're not paying Reddit to promote your ad doesn't mean someone isn't getting paid to put ads on Reddit. Let's look at a bad example. Well, bad in terms of execution, but probably not bad in terms of how many people saw this thing. This post titled, Made My Delivery Driver's Night by Showing Him VR for the First Time has over 20,000 upvotes. Now it's possible a lot of those were bought, but regardless, a lot of people saw this and a lot of people upvoted it. The gaming subreddit's kind of already a dumpster fire with EA's bad spray painted on the side of it. So it was kind of easy for McDonald's and Uber Eats to just slide on in there. Let's break down why this image fails at what it's trying to do. And again, I am aware of the irony of by discussing this, I am actually giving them even more advertising. Uh, but I've also got 29 subscribers, so. Fuck you, yeah, McDonald's. It's important to note that this image was posted around the time that Uber Eats and McDonald's had just announced a partnership, allowing you to get McDonald's delivered for the first time. First of all, why would you take a photo of anything other than the driver? Like the whole point of this post allegedly is, hey, look at my delivery driver. He's playing VR. That's kind of fun, right? And I could see why something like that might be popular on a gaming subreddit. But the fact that he is only like a quarter of the entire shot is very suspicious to begin with. Here's what I like to call Peculiar Entities Notice. It's suspicious. Or penis for short. Not that, not that I know what a short... These are a variety of small normalities that you'd never see in a real advertisement that they put in to try and make this look more authentic and less staged. However, they got greedy and they put too many in. First of all, the bag. They've tried to make it look as though you're not supposed to see it. It's obscured by the wine bottle and it's upside down, making it harder to read, in theory. In reality, everyone except for the legally blind can recognize a McDonald's bag just from the colors alone. It's brown with yellow and red designs, sort of like Takashi 69 If they were smart about it, they would have cropped the image from here up. You still see the bag, you still recognize the McDonald's, it says delivery driver in the title, all the information's there, and you didn't get greedy. Second of all, the food conveniently showcasing two of the most popular menu items. Mmm, doesn't this just get you hungry for a large mick or some beef nuggets? 
Sure, they're not placed lovingly on a platter with a nice lighting rig behind them like you'd see in a normal advertisement, but that would be too obvious. Still, it's an exceptionally well-lit room that doesn't make the food look bad. It's definitely not the sort of crime scene flash photography you often see in bad food pictures. She's also taken a few bites out of that burger. Again, if they just had a big juicy mac sitting right in the middle of the table, pristine, alarm bells would be going off like crazy. But by having it half eaten, it kind of seems a bit more candid, maybe a bit more natural, while still reminding you of how tasty a big fat fucking mac is. Finally, there's the placement of alcohol. While this has started to shift in recent years, family restaurants like McDonald's have always kind of distanced themselves from alcohol, except in countries like Germany, where they decide that if you can pick a fight with the entire world twice, you can probably handle a beer with your cheeseburger. To me, these wine bottles are the biggest red herring because you've never seen alcohol in a McDonald's ad before. And so, if you're not thinking too much, you kind of automatically assume like, oh, well that's not a McDonald's ad, they wouldn't do that. Let's talk about something a bit more recent and a bit harder to pin down. With the release of Toy Story 4, I started to notice a lot of Toy Story 4 related content on Reddit. What makes it so hard to pin down is that a lot of it could actually just be real content. Facts and trivia about the movies, interesting videos, all posted to relevant subreddits that in a lot of cases were actually pretty interesting bits of trivia. If you search Toy Story 4 on Reddit, you can find some kind of suspicious things where a post that otherwise probably doesn't have much to do with Toy Story 4 is kind of shoehorned into a popular subreddit with the title that in some way links it to Toy Story 4. Some of them are funny and some of them are kind of good content, so you could kind of see why people might upvote them. It is just interesting that that one specific keyword of Toy Story 4 just somehow seems to bump posts up a bit higher than normal. I've got no real evidence for this outside of anecdotal evidence, so take what I'm saying with a grain of salt. It just stuck out to me as a suspicious amount of content about one specific movie. There could be some pretty legitimate reasons for why people would post something like this. A lot of people, myself included, have very fond memories of seeing Toy Story when they were younger. And so it makes sense that maybe you saw a TV ad or a poster for Toy Story and you thought, oh, I remember this fact from one of the other ones, I'll post that to Reddit, or this funny image that I saw of Toy Story back in the day. I don't think you should go through life assuming everything is an ad or everything's out to get you, but it is probably important to realise that that can happen and people can pay for spots on your favourite website. And just because it's not herded into a corner and branded with the words ad doesn't mean that someone wasn't paid to say nice things about it. Think critically about what you're reading. Consider what the person had to gain from posting it. And most importantly, like and subscribe motherfuckers, hit that bell button, I'm fucking done.